So we're going to start off this chapter on alkynes with nomenclature of alkynes, and it's uh, in some ways similar to alkenes, and we're going to name it as part of the parent chain. We're going to use the suffix y-n-e. So instead of saying like pentane for alkanes or pentene for an alkene, we're going to say pentine for the alkyne. And just like with alkenes, we're going to number the longest continuous carbon chain that the triple bond is a part of, and we're going to number it in such a way to get the triple bond the lowest possible number. And so in this case, we've got a seven, sorry, a six carbon chain, I can count. Uh, and we can see the triple bond is between carbons two and three. And just like with alkenes, we'll give it the lower of the two numbers for its chain locator. Uh, and so in this case, six carbons is hex. And instead of saying hexane, we're going to say hexine. And with the chain locator, we got two places we can put it. We can say hex dash two dash ine. So right before the suffix ine, we can put the chain locator there. And that's kind of proper. Uh, but also accepted is putting it right before the parent chain itself. So we could say two hexine instead. In the next two examples, we're going to take a look at what happens when you have both an alkene and an alkyne in your compound. So first thing you want to do is find the longest continuous carbon chain that contains both. So and then whichever you can get the lower number is basically how you're going to decide how to number it. So in this case, the longest chain that has both the alkene and the alkyne in this first example is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So some sort of a hept. Uh, for the parent chain. And in this case, if I number it left to right, the alkenes at two. If I number right to left, the alkynes at one, that's the winner. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So no special priority for either of them. It's just whichever one you can get the lower number, that's going to be the winner. So in this case, then, uh, we do have a substituent here at carbon six. So we always start with the substituents and we'll say six methyl. So, and in this case, then, seven carbons is hept. So, and with two major functional groups showing up in the parent chain, your chain locators have to be in the middle of the parent chain's name. You can't stick them uh, at the front of the parent chain before hept. It doesn't work when you have two functional groups. So you couldn't, you know, say one, five, hepti nine. It doesn't work. With two of them in the parent chain, you got to put them in the middle of the parent chain's name. So in this case, we'll say hept dash five dash ene. So we name the ene before the ine, it turns out. So, and then dash one dash Ein. And one thing we should check for anytime you've got an alkene, you should look at your sp2 carbons and see if E and Z is possible. And in this case, the sp2 carbon on the left is bonded to two identical methyls, so you couldn't give either one a higher priority. And there's no such thing as E and Z and no such thing as cis and trans. So no stereochemistry to worry about here in the name. If we look at the second example here, uh, in this case, we're going to find there's a tie. So if I number this left to right, so one, two, three, four, five. So I'd see that my alkene is at position one and my alkyne at, at position four. And if I go the other way around, one, two, three, four, five, I'll see now my alkyne is at position uh, one and my alkene is at position four. It's an absolute tie number wise. So neither one has an, any particular priorities, whichever one you can get the lower number to. But when there is a tie, the rule is just the alkene wins. And so we're going to go with the numbering in red here. So in this case, a five carbon chain, and again with two functional groups showing up in the parent chain, you've got to put your chain locators in the middle of the word, but five carbons is pent. So an en uh, before ein in the name. So in this case, dash one dash en dash four dash ein. And again, anytime you've got an alkene, you should check to see if your sp2 carbons, if e and z is possible. And the sp2 carbon on the left here is bonded to two identical hydrogens. So and so there's going to be no e and z or no cis and trans to worry about in this name either. That is the complete name, pent one en for ein.